So next we have Gunther Eisenbach. Let's give you his bio. E-health public health scholar, infodemiologist, editor-in-chief and publisher of the leading e-health journal JMIR, Medicine 2.0 Congress producer, open access. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a physician by background, so my talk is not uh, computational and, and uh, mathematical. We are using more basic methods like uh, qualitative analysis of tweets. Um, but you, you've heard the, the term infodemiologist, which I, which I uh, use on my Twitter profile. Just want to say quickly, um, uh, and, and John also uh, mentioned at the beginning of this conference that this field really doesn't have a name, but I, I like to use the, the word infodemiology for this. And this goes back to a paper which I published in 2008, um, or 2000, 2006 actually, so long before Google flu trends existed and, and Google didn't publish any trends data at all. So at that time I had the idea that somehow Google searches uh, probably, or I had the idea to look into the question whether or not Google searches correlate with uh, influenza outbreaks. And at that time I had to use a trick to get to this data because Google didn't publish the data. So I, I used a, um, AdWords uh, ad and, and bought some keywords, influenza related keywords, and then Google gives you some good stats on how often people uh, search for these keywords. Uh, so you have the metric of how often your ad is triggered, and you also have the metric of how often people actually click on the ad. And I found a good correlation with, with, um, with uh, influenza uh, like illness. So if you cite the Ginsburg paper in Nature, then please also acknowledge the fact that this has been published like three years before the Nature paper. Um, so uh, I'm using the, the term infodemiology and infovalence, and the idea here obviously being that epidemiology is kind of the x-ray of public health and informs what public health professionals and policymakers are doing, informs their decisions, and these decisions in turn uh, influence population behavior, attitudes, health status, etc. And all this is also reflected on the internet in our information, uh, information publication behavior and communication patterns. And if we can make this measurable, which I call infodemiology, then we can make these additional data points uh, available to public health professionals and policymakers and give them some additional um, data. So. The experience with, with Google shows that it's hard to get this, or it used to be hard to get this data because these data were proprietary. Uh, but now, as the previous speaker already mentioned, there are a lot more data sources out there, including Twitter, which are much more open. So I shifted my focus uh, in, in 2008 towards Twitter, and we prospectively collected uh, tweets which were sent during the H1N1 outbreak. So all tweets which contained the keywords swine flu or H1N1. And we, we used a uh, system which we built, which I call InfoVigil. Uh, I don't have, don't have time to go into this, but uh, it's basically a data mining system and, and data visualization system. So one of the things we looked at is, first of all, terminology. So a very basic study, our hypothesis was that uh, that the term, or we wanted to visualize whether, whether people adopt the WHO recommended term H1N1 over swine flu. So we can plot here, for example, the ratio of tweets which contain swine, the term H1N1 versus swine flu. What's also interesting here is um, that you can also see certain shifts here in, in uh, oh, somehow my laser pointer doesn't work. You can see some some shifts in uh, some some peaks, and th these were actually social media campaigns. There were some, for example, pig farmers launched a social media campaign on on, on Twitter, uh, where where they lobbied to abandon the the term swine flu, and 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 you can actually see this in in, in these kind of pictures. So um, 
we had a research assistant who, who coded about, yeah, who coded thousands of tweets for content. And so we just wanted to get a grasp on this descriptively what people are tweeting about in the H1N1 context. And she classified tweets into uh, these kind of categories. There were some several subcategories, which is all published in our plus one paper. So I don't go into detail here. But basically, she found that about half of the tweets were uh, pointers to resources where people just shared URLs. Uh, but then there was 22% of the tweets which contained uh, personal experiences. For example, I have, uh, or somebody in my family has, has H1N1, or my school is closed because of H1N1, etc. And personal opinions constituted for 14%, uh, jokes, ads, spam, etc. And then we looked also at, at trends over time. There were some interesting trends here. For example, uh, if you look at jokes, for example, at the beginning there was a high prevalence of, of uh, people making jokes on swine flu, and this, this went down. And, and personal experiences uh, went up, and so on. So these are all kind of things that you can learn if you, if you analyze tweets over time. Um, we also did a fun little graphic where, which we call the, the mood index or where we, where we basically plotted the ratio of tweets with a smiley or with different versions of smileys against tweets with, with different versions of, 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 a, of a frowny. And again, you can see at the beginning there was a lot of joking, a lot of smileys. And then when it got really bad, you can see that there were a lot more frownies. So this is kind of a... I mean, there are obviously more advanced methods to do this, natural language processing, et cetera, but, uh, but just looking at smiley source frown is, uh, has the advantage that we can just do simple keyword searches. And uh, we did, these are basically all keyword searches, so we, we plotted some graphs on, on uh, personal experiences over time. So basically we, we defined certain keywords and then searched our tweets database and, and plotted them over time. And we could see a good correlation of personal experience tweets with the H1N1 incidents. Um, we correlated our automated classification method with manual classification methods. And all this is in our PLOS One paper. Um, the other study, uh, which is not published yet, is uh, on H1N1 vaccination sentiment. And again, uh, contrary to the previous speaker, this is not a automated sentiment analysis, but it's a, it's a qualitative analysis of tweets, which for, for some reason we have problems publishing this because the reviewers say, well, you should do some automated method. You should not use these 19th century me methods of qualitative research. But I think <laughs> qualitative research, well, you can also learn a lot, and that, would, that actually informs uh, future automated methods. So basically, uh, she uh, coded uh, anti-vaccination tweets and, and pro-vaccination tweets and came up with a classification system. And, um, and, and what we saw is that in, in the beginning there was a lot, a lot more anti-vaccination as opposed to pro-vaccination and this could also be reproduced in our automated plots. And, um, but the, the caveat here is that a lot of positive tweets were related to the, to the vaccination rollout, actually. And that's also the caveat. If you, if you look back, if you think back to the previous talk, there was both a correlation between positive tweets and, and vaccination uptake. And I think there, there's a confounding issue here. And these are the kind of things you can learn if you do a qualitative analysis. Um, the last sub-study we did is looking at, uh, looking at uh, the, the hubs in the social network. So who was the most influential, who was the most influential in terms of, for example, number of retweets. Uh, so if you think back to the Chris Takis talk, that would be who, who are the influencers and who would you have to influence if you want to influence public opinion. And basically, we saw that a lot of the, the top retweeted accounts were public health agencies. But uh, this is on, on the second slide, which I eliminated. But uh, also, a lot of celebrities were retweeted very often. So if I were a public health official in a 
future pandemic, I would target celebrities. Um, okay, I'm running out of time here, so uh, I just want to put in a short plug for the Journal of Medical Internet Research, which I'm editing, which is the leading health informatics journal, and we are very interested in this kind of research, so if, if you do research in this area and don't know where to send it to, consider this as a journal. The other one is the Medicine 2.0 conference, which will be in this building in September, where John Brownstein is a keynote speaker. Uh, so, and we are also very interested in getting uh, abstracts on DDD uh, in this conference. So, thanks.